Well, first, let me put, give you the context of Malaysia and uh, China relationship. Um, China continues to be Malaysia's largest trading partner uh, for the 14th consecutive year. Uh, and China has always been the largest FDI uh, investor into Malaysia. But having said that, the top two investors, the top two trading partners uh, Malaysia, uh, for Ch Malaysia is both China and the US. And what we're seeing today is like Malaysia is back on the global uh, investors' radar screen. Uh, and we have had good productive discussions with both investors and companies from China and uh, in US. Uh, in fact, uh, we've seen uh, quite a number of companies, uh, both in China, US, and as, as well as in Europe, actually, uh, have been engaging more countries in ASEAN and not just Malaysia on what you just described as friendshoring, reshoring. Uh, and this is, of course, as a result uh, of the so-called decoupling. Uh, but anyway, uh, Martin, I would, the positive side is that we are going to ensure that uh, what we have built over the 50, last 50 years uh, for Malaysia, uh, especially with our relationship with China and the recent visit by our Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Abdul Ibrahim, has elevated uh, that relationship between Malaysia and China. But does that put uh, U.S. French shoring or continued U.S. French shoring in Malaysia at risk? I don't think so, uh, Martin. I think uh, what we have seen uh, is that Malaysia continues uh, to be a destination uh, where we are able to provide the right ecosystem for investors. Uh, bear in mind, uh, for companies, especially in U.S. Uh, and, and China, they're looking at Malaysia not only because of the incentives given, but because of the major industries that have been in Malaysia for quite a while. I'll give you one example, E&E &E sector. Uh, it has been in Malaysia since 1970s, 50 years. And we now, uh, in terms of global market share, have 13% of the global market share for semiconductor. Uh, and also is a major exporter uh, to US. Many come to semiconductor and export 25% of US needs. In fact, in November uh, last year, we just signed an agreement, a cooperation uh, with the United States on the supply of semiconductor to the United States. And we've seen increased interest and announcements made by companies like Intel, uh, Texas and Truman, uh, all that were done uh, recently. Right. Minister, uh, this is JP Ong. I just want to stay on that point with regards to semiconductors. Indeed, we've seen during the COVID-19 pandemic how important Malaysia's semiconductor plants are actually to the global supply chain. In fact, a number of them also have cross-border investments in between Malaysia and China. But as we know, there has been a lot of pressure from the West to try and limit the technology for semiconductors and microchips into China. Is there a concern from Malaysia, especially from the Ministry of International Trade and Industry, that perhaps Malaysia might get pulled into this the way the likes of the Netherlands in Japan have uh, in recent weeks or months? Yes, we're monitoring this. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a lot of questions uh, surrounding this, uh, but what we have seen uh, today, uh, to date, and what we have been uh, engaging with the various companies uh, that are involved, especially in, from China, uh, is yet we have yet to see that uh, impacting because if you look at the companies in Malaysia, uh, the semiconductor industry is predominantly still. Uh, companies that are based, uh, well, owned by, uh, by Europe and also U.S.